going on, y'all? It's your boy, Jage Gibbons here. And I'm Will C. And welcome to yet another episode of the Acromas Podcast. Wow, episode 33. Episode 33. We've been doing this for 33 weeks straight. Didn't miss one. Yeah. We are still grinding. We're yeah. still climbing. We're still, we're still producing. We're still getting it in. Look, if this is your first time listening to the Acromas Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, wherever, let's start off with YouTube, though. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button hit that like button, hit that notification bell. So the next time the Chromas podcast produces a new episode, you will be the first one to get it. Uh, it's about something about the F word. You said first, right? I can't say it. So I got to add on to that, right? I got another F word for you guys. It's oh, free, man. free to Damn. hit all those options that's mm. available to you. That's crazy. You know, Jay said, you know, you get all of it first um, mm-hmm. and you have the ability to spread that joy, spread that word, mm-hmm. spread those gems, healthy habits yeah. amongst new folks new people that's in the channel to reach what we're trying to accomplish and it's just a better overall world for everyone absolutely is i mean look what a week it has been there's been some tornadoes there's been um issues across the world of course we know that's still going on there's sports is back football's back college and nfl that's all back now so um man it's been it's been a crazy week as it always is um (laughs) Is there anything special that happened for you this week? Anything big? Anything major? Uh, I mean, the grind, man. Just yeah. making preparation. Just a little side personal thing. My daughter's birthday. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's eighth. coming. It's uh, coming. Uh, so just making preparation for wow, Premier Bear. That's so fast, uh, man. Yeah. So I decided so I got her, got her this bike. And oh, yeah. uh, I've been on the grind of trying to get little other knickknacks and preparation. Yeah, so that's, that's up, how my man. week has been in between the, the grind of the, yeah. the, the nine to five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, checking back to episode 32, just all the mistakes that I have learned along the way. Even this past week, man, there were some mistakes I made um, with work and just uh, life in general. So being able to follow those same five, that five-step strategy that we talked about last week, to be able to go back to that and look Mm. through each and every one of those and say, okay, this is where I can, this is where I am. I know what's going on. I know how to get to the next level. I know how to not repeat that again. And I know how to sustain this new momentum in order to continue to gain success where I am. So um, it really did help me. And I hope for anybody else out there who has listened to episode 32, if you have not, it's still there. You have the chance. Go watch it now. Go watch it right now. You can pause this, come back, yeah. go watch it right now. That fought that five step strategy, man. It is really, it's really saved me time. It's it's effective, mm-hmm. and I uh, mean, most of all, it works, and that's what's most important. Yeah, you apply it to your lifestyle, um, and results will, will flourish. It'll be what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a process like anything else in life. Uh, it's, it's just it's another form of repetition. Just like you physically work out your muscles, you exercise your mental capacity to increase healthy habits, and you build off of that and you grow off that. So it's really based on the investment into you, the time you put into you. Exactly. So Jay said, go back, hit those gyms. Come mm-hmm. see us in this one. We'll be exactly. waiting for you. Yeah, we will be. And look, I know you mentioned investing, right? Yes, sir. Investing in time, investing yes. in energy, yes, sir. investing in yourself. Yeah. I mean, look, tonight we are excited to say that we have been able to get someone that I know has been grinding for years, has been investing time, yeah. has been investing money, <clears throat> has, in, has been investing in himself, believing in himself, trusting in himself to get to where he is today. He is a rising star in hip hop, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, time is now too. I put that on the Acromas podcast. If you if you didn't see it, just check out our page. Yeah, um, it's a great song, great hits that this man has been producing for years. I look, I've known him for an extremely long time for more reasons than just because yeah. he's family. But yeah. um, it's been an amazing journey to see, um, and the climb still is still going up, man. Look, without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 33, I want to welcome to the Acromas podcast, none other than Rock Cartel. Rock, you in the building. It's the Rock. What's man. going on? What's going on? Thank you. Uh, first of all, man, thank y'all for having me. A hell of an introduction, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, that's how we do the Acromas podcast. Like nothing less, man. Yes. Greatness. So we got to oh, recognize absolutely. it as such. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Brother, it's greatness. Same. Absolutely. Shout out to the Acromas podcast, man. Family vibes. I love it. Absolutely, Thanks, bro. Man. Nothing less, brother. Hey, look. We got to get started from ground zero with you, man. We, we need to know a little bit more about the ground zero. How did you get started in music in general? Yeah. <laughs> uh, shoot, man. I, I think I was maybe like 11, 12 years old. 
because my my father he he used to, he 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 does it. Of course, you know, grandpa does it. So it it, it was around, and my father he would have when I go to New York for the summertime. During summertime when school was out, me and my brother and my father, father had a little studio in the house. And I was probably was maybe like 11, 12 years old, around that age. And he would, for fun, like our little bonding moment, we would just be writing. Like he would, have, he would, he would, he would play a beat, and me and my brother would be writing raps, and my sister, she would be singing. And then we, we just did it like that for like years. And I was like, I wait the bond. And um, I think that's when I first started writing music was when I was about 11 or 12 and then I started taking it seriously later on down the line wow. so when you first started writing was there something that connected you emotionally to the music were you writing was it things that you were going through was it things that you were experiencing or seeing yeah things that I'm things I'm experiencing things I was seeing just uh just just living you know like I, I can't. I can't even remember the early raps because it was so long ago. But I know everything just came from a place of. I, I always come from a place of honesty in my music. No matter if it's a happy song, a sad song, a mad song. At that moment, that time, I'm either thinking about something or reflecting on something, or I'm thinking about the future, or I'm thinking about the present. Whatever I'm feeling at the moment, that's what comes out in, uh, in the lyrics. Hmm. So, so it sounds like it's a. It's a... It's a great way of like art imitates life, right? Like life imitates art, right. a way of expressing yourself. So that's right, dope. right, that's dope. right. That's dope. Thank you, bro. Were you were you always were you always slated to hip hop? Like was hip hop the first pull for you, or was there another genre of music that you started in and was like, man, this 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 also affects me. It also hits me, and I'm able to express myself through this. I would say, I mean, it was it was it was go go. Mm-hmm. originally um hip-hop of course hip-hop was just always there right. and then of course of course reggae but go-go as far as far as me actually playing the music it was it was go-go and frisbee and then oh, wow. and then and then rap oh wow mm-hmm. did you did you enjoy go-go as much as you do hip-hop now yeah for sure but mm-hmm. you know you, you, the, the beauty of it is like I don't really categorize music into genres mm. because for me, music is music. It's yeah, just yeah. a different tone, a different tempo, a different BPM, yeah. and a different melody. But, it, but music is music. It all comes back, and once it once it's wrapped, it's gifted the same way. So I never really looked at like a genre switch because I could blend different sounds into one song. Right. So I never really look at like a genre thing, whether this is higher than or this, lower than this, or you know whatever the case may be. So I would say it's the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I re- I remember those nights, man. Those long nights in my 1990 model yeah. Mercedes Benz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, hey, yeah, I remember. Mercedes, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, you talking about how we how we packed in there like some ground. Yeah, I mean, we had five <laughs> or six heads in that small joint, man. Wheels to the ground car scraping off the ground i mean <laughs> just all night man traveling around the studios picking up heads getting them there taking them back home man i mean if, if you weren't there to witness it you wouldn't understand that ground man i gotta tell you that was, that, was a, <laughs> that, that was a good grind time i mean do you do you personally think that that grind has turned you into who you've become today do you think that you had to go through those moments to to really understand how much you love this craft yeah mm. I, I think so but I, I think at that time it also showed how much i love it because i mm. honestly i forgot i forgot all about those <laughs> like every, <laughs> I, every now and then it will pop up in my head but i forgot that that played an important part of you know in the journey like from the early days of music period just going yeah. through that mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. But like it was off eleven o'clock at night too. You know? Yeah, buddy, just getting buddy. there. We wasn't getting paid for it, so it's not like we were generating income at the time. But it was, it was just it was just pure passion, pure love. Yeah. And I still feel that way now. And anytime mm. I go do something mm. involving music, that's good. Well, I mean, I guess I'm, I would just wonder, like, for the love of music and passion. I mean, I, I'm music is you know, I'm in tune with that part of me too. It's a big part of who I am. Uh, I feel like music speaks to you in another way. You know what I mean? In more in depth and sometimes in ways we can't put through through words. Uh, so you do a hell of a job being able to 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 be able to provide that storytelling 
and to express that through your artistry. Um, so how would you say, you know, when the lights go, goes off and you go back to, to, to life itself outside of that, how do you channel that part of your passion to drive you as a person? You know what I mean? Like your growth, your development. Right. And, you know, because as an artist, I would imagine uh, it helps you to evolve. But through your experience, like you said, you know, you just consolidate it all. And it, I'm sure it generates that, that spark for you, right? Mm -hmm. So right, like, right, when right. You, when you hit those walls and those barriers and adversity, like how do you, how do you utilize that to to keep you sustained? Because like Jay said, with your grind, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. Consistency of doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, it's a love you gotta have, you gotta and have. you know that you got that. We know yeah. that. So mm -hmm. it's like where you are from at that point to now. Like, what are some of the tools that you could share with everyone that you utilize in your growth and you know on your journey of, of, of life and how you're going about it, Rock? Mm. Damn, that's that's a loaded question. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Welcome to the Chromis. Yeah, that's what we do, brother. <laughs> that's a, that's a hell of a question. Okay, uh, I would say, obviously, I'm still learning as I go, right? But I would say, man, one thing I'm one thing I'm valuing a lot more is my mental health and, and, and my energy around me, right? Because I notice, um, if 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 I'm not a hundred percent, there's no way I can run my business a hundred percent, and that's just me physically, mentally, the whole nine yard. And I got to the point this year, actually, this year, 2021, I got to the point where I just realized, like things started clicking more. Last last year was a good year, music career wise. Um, and things started really, really happening, like in a solid way. So 2021 came about and I expected, you know, fast, faster results. Like I expected things to happen right away and it didn't happen right away. And I got to the place where I'm like, you know what? I'm finally at a point in my career where I am making monthly income for music on a consistent basis. Um, and I'm not satisfied, but I appreciate where I'm at at this point in time. Hopefully, the, this kids ain't too loud, ain't they? No, no well, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, totally okay. Fine, yeah. But I, 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 I appreciate where I am at this at this point in time. And the way I like to look at it now is when I put out content, I don't. I put it out with the intent to release it to a large audience and to get it out there to much many people. But I'm no longer attached to the results of that. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I think the results could be a killer. Like, like when you say taking care of you, and you know, how do I, how do I balance that? I would be stressed out all day if I was seeking results 24/7 from my career. You know, because that's just, that's just not the way it works. Sometimes the seed needs to, sometimes the seed needs to, needs to grow. Let me move on a little bit. Nah, it's oh, all good. It's all good. We, yeah. Hey, look, we raw here. We, yeah. yo, we don't do we takeovers. Do we just, nah. we're here, man. We just it's straight, yeah. More. It's all a part it's of it. It's all about life. It's all about yeah. It. It's all about the cause. There we go. But yeah, so sometimes the seed needs to, you know, once the seed is planted, the seed needs time to grow. And I'm learning that as I develop in my career that every step of the way, the results come when I don't expect it. You know, when I expect results, the results don't come, but when I when I least expect it, that's when they come. So, I, once I started keeping that in my head, it was no way that I can be, you know, unsatisfied with what I'm doing so far. Mm. So I could be more happy with the content that I put out and know that I put it out full effort to market it, get it out there to the public, and then once it's out there, it's out there, and whatever happens, whatever happens to it, happens to it. I'm moving on to the next project, moving on to the next journey in my life. You know what I mean? And I just got to that point because I was, uh, this, this business is stressing out. I think business in general is stressing out. You know, and anything, anything you're operating, any brand you're building, it will stress you out because we all seek results. You know, we only do, we doing this to, 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 to hit our goals, to have that result. And that would drive you crazy if the result don't come when you want it to come. So I got to that point in my career now where, you know, I'm pretty happy where I'm at, and I want to get further, but I'm not attached. 
And then it's, it's funny because I found that once I, the, the least attached I am, the more I, I, I see more results coming. So I, mm. I keep it that way now. Wow. So it seems like it seems like having gratitude and having perspective has been something that helped to boost your career. And it's probably not something that you sat there and thought about, okay, maybe if I practice these two new habits and implement it in my life, I will probably I will probably be further than where I was before, but I would also be happier mentally. I also have I also keep that joy that I have in the art that I'm I'm bringing about. Would you would you say that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That, that that gratitude is big because uh, yeah. still got to live every day, still got to experience every day, still got to. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't be not happy with where I am. You know, I gotta enjoy every step of the way. So that gratitude is big. And like I said, that's something I actually started really not focusing on like intentionally, but it's just something I just switched. Just click, it just clicked with me starting this year, actually. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's really big. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it just sounds like uh, you, you, you've you accepted a place of being in your now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're in your moment for what it's worth because that's all you really have. And as long as you are your best self in that moment the greatest results will be what it is to do because it's enough for you everyone else like we all get to benefit from the love of what you create and what you bring into existence um as an artist um and uh it tells a part of who you are as well right so so as you as you continue to, to move and progress forward like that and you have that thought process it's a healthy way of thinking and moving forward because you know outside of what you're producing people are watching you too yeah you know they're watching see how you, you're moving maneuvering through life and, uh, you know you, you, you're referencing like the importance of mental health awareness which is something we stress big That's huge. you know we're a huge avid huge avid supporter of that uh recognize it you know that you can't do anything if you're not your best self and you're not in your truth yeah. you know protecting your state of being and and to get to a point of where you've gotten this this is impressive because it, it allows for the sustainability to continue to push forward. And what you seem to have done is something we, we talk about and, you know, embrace as an um, affirmation of sorts is something I was talking to someone about this moment too, mm. uh, where I, I, for me, I've created this thing where I adapt, adjust, evolve. Mm. So this is like what it sounds like you've done yeah. in a period of you recognize where you were, mm. the success of what that was. You didn't let it deter you because you weren't getting the results you needed. You just you thought, you know, outside of that spectrum of doubt and you're like, all right, let's switch things up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's switch it up. Let's adjust the process of why I do this to begin with my purpose. Right. And you, maybe subconsciously, this is exactly where you are and you're there and you're getting the peace that you look for in the process of the passion you deliver. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's, it's really a telling story of you rock to be able to, to, to channel it in that way. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, is you know with your fan base and, and those who are learning about you and that thought process and maybe some other you know artists is out there just to, to hear this you know you 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 know you're giving some gems some good gems you know, that really can make a difference uh, i know for me hearing you express that is just it's phenomenal man it's yeah. awesome to hear and i'm I'm taking tippets of what you said that thought process to help me in my nail too mm -hmm. so thank you uh Absolutely. You know, no problem thank you Absolutely. I mean, and that's that's the beauty of the Acromas podcast. You know, our as our community grows and builds and we help each other, we learn from our guests. We learn from from people that we've had on, people that we've, you know, discussed things in yeah. life in general. So, you know, loving loving and seeing that growth is powerful and it's important. And it's honestly beautiful to see when everything comes to fruition. I mean, where you are now, as as Will C said, it's been a ton of growth. And you mm -hmm. had to you had to understand where you were to get to where you are now. But with the knowledge that you have now, is there anything that you would tell a younger rock cartel? Yes, good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a question where I might just say yes or no. Yes mm -hmm. and no. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, if I, if, I, if I knew what I knew back then, who knows? where i would be at this point but mm. i think i think i think my the younger version of myself was exactly where it needed to be just to get to this point mm. um 
So I, I don't think I would tell him anything because we here now. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I love that thought process. Wow, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. I mean, and look, you know, and I think I think that's the that is the right mindset to have. You know, I mean, back then you weren't you were exactly where you needed to be at that time. That was exactly where Rock Cartel's career was. That's where your mindset was. And knowing that and knowing where you are now, I think if back then you were like, oh man, I wish I had the knowledge of where my music would be today, of me being able to sustain myself monthly from the career that I'm building, I think maybe your expectations would have changed because you wouldn't have known the exact timing, you wouldn't have known how much you would have been getting, you would have tried to rush that whole experience, you would have missed out on learning experiences. I was just about to say that probably would have got ripped off because, yeah. uh, <laughs> like, seriously, like exactly. me having to be independent and really do a lot of my my, my own funding, I probably would. If, if, if something was to pop a long time ago and I, somebody would have came and put a large sum of money behind me, mm. I probably want to obtain the the proper, you know, the proper knowledge I need to actually sustain a music career because this music career is a journey, you know, and it takes a uh, it, it takes for the artist to know how to brand build and, and run a business. Mm. It's a lot that goes into it that at least 75% of the artists in the market right now do not even know. They probably have somebody doing it for them. I would mm. say let's let's hold it there in terms of building a brand. Like what, what have you learned about brand building that you could tell to other struggling artists who may be putting their own brand into somebody else's hands to build? rather than building it themselves, knowing exactly what they're looking for and who their audience is? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, identity, first of, first and foremost, I would say identity. Um, like, who are who are you? I'll say for myself, uh, I mean, o over the last six, seven years now, if anyone has been following my journey, they, they know what my message is always, I'm always coming with something. It's always coming, you know, you know, at the end of the day, it's always going to help one person or motivate uh, one person. Mm -hmm. Entertaining, you know, good video, whatever the case may be, it's going to be my form, but they know what they, they know what to expect. Um, and then after the identity is established, uh, you know, uh, a very good aesthetic, you know, a very good brand look. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like, you know, I can use my logo as an example. Um, but I would say identity is the the, the number one thing as far as mm -hmm. brand building because without the identity, yeah, I mean, I remember years ago I, we was having a conversation about uh, I think running ads years ago, mm -hmm. and I remember you asked me like, who are you targeting? You know, and at that time my my target wasn't clear enough; it wasn't specific mm -hmm. enough, you know. And then as I was able to build up more data, you know, build up more data and add more to the funnel. I was able to have a clear picture of like, okay, this is my core audience, you know, mm -hmm. and this is this is what they love, and you know, they love this more than they do. They love this too, but this 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 sector right here loves it more than they do at this mm -hmm. point. So once I was able to uh, identify, you know, what my message is and how I'm going to deliver my message, now is identifying how this brand is going to be portrayed to the public and how I could get people to follow easily, whether if it's through merchandise, um, you know, whatever. It's many, many different factors. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very, that's a really good, great in-depth uh, breakdown on it um, that I, I, I think as a whole, you, you broke down what, what it takes to, to really analyze you know on, on what we do as cons you know is to, to produce to consumers right mm -hmm. um so you know with that being said and where you are now like what's your projection like for the next what's, what what does the future look like or how do you perceive it to be moving forward rock for like the next three three years three five years like um i would say my next goal my next goal and I'll be working on this throughout the whole 22 is to is is to bring some more partners. Mm -hmm. like that that that's my next goal. Um, putting a lot of monetization into place because I mean I've been I've been grinding it for for like literally about 10 years now, 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, at this That's point, I'm true. like, okay. And 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 that's another thing that 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 clicked to me once I um, you know, once I once I had that you know switch of mind of just surrendering once it's out there, it was also, maybe I mean, I, I should be monetizing a lot more, you know, mm-hmm. a lot monetizing a lot more, and that's one of my goals now is to monetize a lot more. Like we we at a point in the business now where it's changing where I can reach out to certain people and. You know, getting a percentage of a record for for exchange for 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 funds for the next project. So, mm. since I am bringing income, you know, they could they could take a look at my numbers. They could see what I'm doing. They could see what I'm bringing in. They could see that I'm consistent. And you know, I could probably put the right partner in place. So, like that's that's one of my one of my next goals overall for the next two three years is just to make a full time living mm. off of what I'm doing. Like next year my, my projectory is fifty thousand for the year in music. I mean that's 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 something that most people make in their job every year. Right. So that's my goal for next year is fifty thousand for the year. Wow. So I'm just, yeah yeah breaking it down to small steps. Yeah. That's exactly that's the stepping Perfect. stones. Perfect. That's exactly right. Many milestones. Many milestones. We always talk about yes, that on sir. your promise podcast. It's always yeah. important to have those those stages before you hit that that big goal, just to make sure that you're going the right way, make sure everything is tracking appropriately, and you can, you can do things to measure that um, in order to get there, rather than just blindly saying, "Okay, yeah, I think I'm getting closer." No, you can actually know if you are. So yeah. I think right. taking taking those small steps to get to that big goal. It's huge. And you mentioned the 50K for a year. I mean, that is beautiful. That is mm-hmm. a great goal to, to hit. It's a great marker to have. And, and with that being said, did you, was there anything else from the move from the DMV over to California that you had to take into mind? I, I know, of course, the, the cost of living in Cali is so much higher than it is yeah. in the DMV. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I know that's one thing you had to take into consideration when you're out there grinding, man. So yeah. was there anything else where you're like, all right, this is a little bit different. I got to switch up my mentality a little bit more because I'm, I'm, I'm born and raised in a DMV. I'm in a whole other landscape now. Hmm. Was there any other thing that you had to really adjust in your life um, that would affect your music in a positive way? Yeah. Mm. So I was I was working a day job up until July second. Mm. Um, that that was that was when I was I was working that here for three years up until July second. Mm. Um, from like yeah the same month that I moved here, June twenty eighteen, mm. and it it was it it was it was nothing that I was passionate about, and I'm thinking okay. Okay, it, it was hospital maintenance mechanic at a hospital engineering department. It's cool and everything, but it, it's it's the money was good, but it wasn't nothing I was truly passionate about. And I noticed even even if I tell myself, okay, once I once I get off, I got this and this amount of time to do what I need to do, the energy level is just not there. The mental is just not there. It's just not the same as if I was doing something else to bring in residual income and just have fully focused on my career. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I, I, had to, I had to get to the point of making some sacrifices and 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 making making those decisions on myself to have my self discipline step up to the next level and get away from that job because uh, it wasn't it wasn't serving me. It wasn't nothing that was in the field of where I am. You know, I can see if it's something related to where I am, but it wasn't nothing in the field of where. Where my career is, so two different things I'm doing every day, and it just didn't work. I just, I, I just felt like a mental burden. And once I made that decision, literally, I lied to you not. I mean, that was with July second, two months ago from today. I met so many people after that just by being, just by having free time, just by mm-hmm. not having free time, but just having freedom, mm-hmm. you know, from, 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 from going into something that I, I didn't really want to be in. And I mean, I, I've met literally. I, I lied to y'all not. The other day, I had a nice conversation with. He goes by the name of King Carter. Um, mm-hmm. He's the he's the baby's manager. He mm-hmm. he's the found he's he's a co-founder of South Coast Music Group. 
I met him the other day here in LA. We had a long conversation. I gave one of my shirts, played a bunch of my songs. He loved it. And it, 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 it clicks. It, it, yeah, I appreciate it. It clicks so good because we had something to talk about right away because he, he he's familiar with the people who was helping me on my last project. So, you know, um, things like that, I, I wouldn't have ran into him if I was at work, you know, because it, it was around the time where I would have been at work. So, and there's a few other, few other examples that happened just like that after I left my position. So that was, you know, it, it's, it's decisions like if, if I'm going to be here, I'm not going to be here for nothing. I didn't come here. I didn't come here late for nothing. I could be doing, I could be working at home. I could be back in Maryland doing that. So mm-hmm. I, I had to make the sacrifice. You're either going to do it or you're not. You know, am mm-hmm. I fine? I'm going to find a way to make 50000 a year in music or I'm not. It's, it's, wow. it's going to have to happen. And I mean, look, that is a powerful leap to take. I mean, especially mm-hmm. if you're you're in a place that's unfamiliar, you know, you've been there since 2018, but you're in an environment that's unfamiliar. You're working a job in order to help, you know, help feed yourself, help find a place to live. And, you know, to be able to be able to do that is it's powerful, man. So kudos to you. Um, and I mean, goodness gracious, that that sounds like you have some really good upcoming projects lined up yes. around the corner, especially if you're <laughs> having conversations with people like that. So, I mean, is are there are there any other projects that you have coming up that the audience uh, should know about? Well, the time is now three just dropped. Oh, um, okay. we, 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 we push we pushing that. OK. And uh, I don't really have anything coming out till January. Okay. Okay. So how can yeah. we listen to like where uh you know let everyone know like that, that's, what's out that that? Yeah, time, is, time is now three is out any, everywhere. They they listen to Spotify, Apple Music, Title, wherever they listen to, um, mm-hmm. SoundCloud, everywhere. Time is now three is out everywhere. It just dropped uh, last last month. Nice. So they could get that. Oh yeah. Look, bro, I, I got to tell you, man, I am, and you already know, I tell you this all the time. I'm I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so proud of your grind. I'm so proud of where you are now. I'm proud of your mentality. I'm proud of your patience, your perspective, your gratitude. You've always, you've always been that go-getter. You've never been somebody who sits there and waits for things to happen. You always go and capture it. And the growth that I've seen over the past 20 plus years has just been absolutely insane. So I got to say from, from, from fan to fan, man, I'm, I'm proud of you. I love you, bro. And I, you, I just keep doing your thing, man. Keep doing your thing. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Love you too. Yeah, absolutely. And then the universe has a way of working itself out, man. Once you, once you give it something, you will get something in return. And that's exactly what's happening right now. We see it. We see it straight from Rock Cartel. And we hear it right from his mouth, man. Absolutely. So that's that's beautiful to hear. Absolutely, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. You know, so like, like I said, uh, Rock. You know, before we, I think before we cut on and got going, and knowing you know, knowing of you for so long in that in that way, and uh, you know, Jay, I stand on like it's always been that way, and just seeing from this is knowing you doing your thing is definitely something that's infectious and it's motivating. Yeah. We're just happy to be able to put it on a grand display for the world to see, mm-hmm. you know, recognize your greatness and, uh, you know, to take accountability for oneself and to go be a getter as well, you know, because time is now, right? Mm. Time is now, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. Yeah. So, so Rock, where where can our audience find you? Because yes, we, we want them to be able to find oh, yeah. you. We want them to be able to reach out to you. You are also part of this community. Uh-huh. So let, let sure. the great people know exactly where they can find you. For sure. They can find me. Uh, the first they can tune into my website, subscribe, www.rockcartelmusic.com. They can find me on Instagram, uh, rock.cartel, um, Twitter, rockcartel underscore, Facebook, rockcartel music. I'm, I'm everywhere. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. That's awesome. And, and look, we'll put it in our content. We'll yeah. put it in the copy as well. So everybody will be able to take one clip and find you exactly where you are, man. Absolutely. For look, sure. I got to tell you, Rock. We appreciate your time being on the podcast, man. This was an absolute beauty and a gem to have. And look, if there are artists out there that are listening to this right now, that are hearing this podcast and understanding that journey, it is a grind, man. You you have to grind for years to get to where you want to go. You got to love what you do and you got to make sacrifices to get there. But it is also important to keep perspective and also to be gracious. Yeah, for absolutely. Sure. For and sure. guys, look gratitude at it, look is key. It. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so we rock out here. You know, this is another avenue as well. Well, please definitely feel free to, free to reach out to you. I imagine, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, you know, 
that's wealth of knowledge and opportunity that may line itself up the way the universe works. You just never know. Yeah. So, so like, don't you be shy of the community and newcomers. Yeah, you know, exactly. if you're passionate or you know what, do what, what you know Rock did. Face your fear is what he did. Mm-hmm. He faced his fear of adversity and he seek to change to be what he chooses to be and to succeed and do what he's doing right now and killing it for him mm-hmm. first and foremost. So if that's not infectious, if you don't feel chills just listening to what you heard, like I did, reevaluate where you are, folks. Yeah, get them stones. Get them stones in place. Yeah. Start grinding. Wow. The yeah. Rock, I mean, look, you know, I, I know you, as you talked about grinding, as you talked about grinding, I know it's important to keep that image up, to to exa- to understand what your audience is looking for and to be able to to offer your art to them. It takes a lot of guts to really know exactly who you are and not fall into any other traps that would pull you away from the audience that is really clamoring for your art, clamoring for your music. So, A, if you are available next Sunday, we've got an episode coming out. We're going to be talking about building a healthy self-image to enhance your self-esteem. So I think, I think with this particular podcast that we're on now, with this episode here with Rock, I think it's important to to see your healthy self-image that you have, knowing where you're going, knowing how high you're going to grow, knowing the goals that you have in front of you, and understanding how that can help enhance your self-esteem. And you, you, I mean, I saw you rocking the stage in Baltimore a couple of weekends ago. There's nothing wrong with your self-esteem, my man. Oh, no. You was, <laughs> he was rocking. I'm telling you, bro. He was rocking the crowd. He was controlling the crowd. He, he was like, yo, I want everybody on their feet. I want everybody. He, he set it ablaze, bro. He set it ablaze. And, and I know that's what he does. I know that's what he's been doing. Yes, sir. The past 20, 20 years now, man, he's always been a go-getter. So... Once again, tune in next Sunday for that episode. Yeah. But for this episode here, Rock, again, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for taking that time out your busy afternoon, man, to hang with sure. us, pop it up with us, and build with our community. We'd love to see you build as well, brother. Absolutely. Hey, for sure. Thank you all for having me. Hey, uh, most success to y'all. So, appreciate you, man. Thank appreciate you, you, bro. Of course, we're going to have to yeah. have you on in the future. Oh, yeah. We're going to be a return of guest here. Of course. <laughs> Of course, it would be like DJ Blad and Blue. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right, y'all. So until next Sunday, it's your boy Jage Given. We'll see. Yeah.